With such a variety of films to his credit, it's hard to find a unifying theme to the works of director Stanley Kubrick. His films have a quality that is almost indescribable, a certain strangeness, sometimes subtle, sometimes overt. Something about a Kubrick film makes it different. They approximate reality as they pull you in, yet they are bizarre and usually implausible. One has to pause and think about what is happening on the screen to realize what is really going on. Otherwise, they will stay in the normalcy presented. Kubrick insisted on near complete control over the films he made, and in doing so was able to make films in many different genres and redefine them in the process. Reclusive, controversial, perfectionist, demanding, legend. All these words describe Stanley Kubrick. Filmmaking is one of the only art forms that is highly collaborative. No one person can carry out all the phases of production. Yet Kubrick, probably more than any other director, or any other type of filmmaker, put his own touch on a project. He did this by demanding complete creative control of a project, something the Hollywood studios were reluctant to give to directors, but for Kubrick, they did. It was the only way he would work. He would often have actors dress rehearse scenes 30 to 50 times before shooting, during which he would decide where to set up the camera and how to shoot the scene. He usually did not have storyboards, just ideas in his head, and sometimes he came up with those on the spot. Having the plans in his head or making them up on the fly and subsequently reshooting scenes several times while making adjustments was part of the way he kept control of a project. I'm sure many of you are familiar with Stanley Kubrick's more recent work, starting with Dr. Strangelove in 1964 and culminating with Eyes Wide Shut in 1999. What I would like to do in this short video is provide a brief overview of his earliest and lesser known works from 1951 to 1962. Stanley Kubrick's first film is a nine minute documentary called Flying Padre made in 1951. It covers two days in the life of priest father Fred Statmuller, whose New Mexico parish is so large he uses his Piper Cub airplane to visit its various members. Stanley Kubrick's second film is another short documentary, this one running 16 minutes and based on Kubrick's pictorial for Look magazine entitled Prize Fighter. Day of the Fight, 1951, tells of a day in the life of a middleweight Irish boxer named Walter Cartier and culminates with his fight against Bobby James in which he is victorious. Fear and Desire, made in 1953, with a running length of 62 minutes, is what you could call feature length. The plot, if there is any, is four soldiers are trapped behind enemy lines and must get back to safety. Kubrick's father cashed in his life insurance policy to help fund the movie. Kubrick ended up hating it and spent the rest of his life tracking down all the reels and destroying them. The Seafarers, made in 1953, in color, running 29 minutes, and lost for 40 years. It's a promotional video designed to boost the membership of the Seafarers International Union. It's a very straightforward movie. I would only recommend it if you're interested in the history of the Seafarers International Union. Nothing special or unique here. But hey, Stanley Kubrick gotta get paid. Killer's Kiss, 1955, 67 minutes. This is where it starts to get interesting. I recommend everything from here on. Starting with this film, you can see Kubrick's style develop and grow. Killer's Kiss is a film noir about a boxer that is leaving town for a few days, told in flashback. He ends up taking his beautiful and vulnerable neighbor with him and rescues her from an abusive relationship in the process. The Killing, 1956, 85 minutes, another classic film noir, this time a heist gone wrong. They seem to have executed the perfect robbery at a horse racing track, then almost everybody ends up dead at the rendezvous house afterwards. How? No spoilers. You'll have to watch and find out. This film stars Sterling Hayden, who would go on to be in Dr. Strangelove and The Godfather as Captain McCluskey. Paths of Glory, 1957, 88 minutes. A war drama starring Kirk Douglas, who will star in Kubrick's next epic film, Spartacus. Douglas plays Colonel Dax, who must defend his men after they are accused of cowardice and put on military trial with the punishment of death by firing squad for refusing to attack an enemy position that would have been suicide. Spartacus, 1960. Three hours, 17 minutes, tells the story of a slave who becomes a gladiator, then escapes, raises an army, becomes a general, and then leads a revolt against a decadent Roman Republic. It's very similar to the movie Gladiator, except Spartacus becomes a general after he was a gladiator. Perhaps no other director has moved from genre to genre with such fluidity. Kubrick deserves his place in history, and the nature of films means that he will be studied and remembered for a long time.